All right, what do you have to know about the audit of employee benefit plans under ERISA? Well, for starters, you got to know about the different parties involved. If there's an employee benefit plan, that means you have an employer and you have employees. Management is the employer, and then you have employees who participate in the plan. Then there might be a plan custodian. There probably is a plan custodian, a bank or qualified financial institution might be used to manage the employee benefit plan assets. And then you have an auditor. The independent auditor is not responsible to know whether an audit is even required for the employee benefit plan. But if there is an audit required, what are the auditor's responsibilities? So we're gonna look at all of that because this is growing in importance on the CPA audit exam. So while companies are not forced to have employee benefit plans, if they do have one, it likely falls under ERISA rules. Most employee benefit plans are subject to the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, better known as ERISA. Here's something you definitely have to know. There's two basic types of ERISA plans. You got welfare plans and you got pension plans, and they both could be subject to ERISA rules. What makes them different from each other is that welfare plans include health care plans, your health insurance plan, your disability plan, maybe a life insurance plan. So health care, disability, and life insurance plans are what we call welfare plans. Then there's the all-important pension plan, retirement income or deferral of income until retirement with those vesting requirements. Those are pension plans and they're often subject to ERISA. Vesting just means are employees entitled to the benefits earned yet without any future employment required? If so, if you're entitled to benefits that you've earned without any future employment required, then your benefits have vested. If not, then you might have to work a little longer for your benefits to count toward retirement. For example, if you were working for a company for a little over a year and you quit now, if you forfeit those benefits because you haven't been working there long enough, then those benefits haven't vested yet. Now, employee benefit plans cost companies big money. So the company tries to save wherever possible, but they must comply with ERISA. For example, minimum age cannot be set above 21 years old to enter the pension plan. And this is to prevent employees from having to work for the company for 10 years in order to become eligible. ERISA does not allow for discrimination. What discrimination means with regard to these employee benefit plans, it means that plan features that relate to things like contributions and vesting for the highly compensated employees, those plan features usually must be the same for non-highly compensated employees. You can't discriminate. You can't say that, well, executives, they only have to be working for the company for one year in order for vesting, but everybody else has to be working for the company for three years. Can't do that. That would be discrimination. Funding requirements. Well, pension plans are typically subject to specific funding requirements, but welfare plans are not. And the reason for that is that pension plans typically involve employee money going into the plan along with employer money, whereas welfare plans very often involve only employer money. We'll talk more about funding, but let's look at vesting rules. Very important. Minimum employment to enter the pension plan is 12 months or 1,000 hours. Usually benefits don't vest until you work 24 months for the company. But look, you can start earning the benefits after working there just 12 months. So if you quit in month 20, you forfeit the benefits earned between months 12 and months 20 because it didn't vest yet. There's no vesting until you work there 24 months. Now, once you work beyond 24 months, all benefits earned from month 12 have now vested. And if it's a pension plan, you can collect the vested benefits at retirement age, even if you quit now. So this is an example of vesting eligibility rules and company pension plans are allowed to vest more quickly than ERISA requirements, but not more slowly. What does that mean? Well, a company could establish full vesting after 12 months, but if they don't do that, then full vesting will occur after 24 months. What the company's not allowed to do is delay vesting and say, well, you have to work here for four years before you fully vest. So let's try a multiple choice question just based on what we know so far. Which legislation is most directly associated with employee benefit plans? And it would be the ERISA. You're looking for Employee Retirement and Income Security Act of 1974. Letter C 
is the correct answer. How about this one? Under ERISA rules, the minimum age to be eligible to enter a pension plan, A, cannot be set under age 21. I remember something about age 21. B says something about age 30. C, age 18. D says age 21 again. Well, the answer is D because the minimum age to be eligible to enter a pension plan cannot be set above the age of 21. It could certainly be set below age 21. That would encourage younger employees to enter the plan. But if somebody's been working there for 12 months or let's say a thousand hours and they're age 21 or older, they must be eligible to enter the pension plan. They cannot be delayed by the company because the company cannot set the minimum age to be eligible to enter the plan to be above the age of 21. So let's go with letter D. Now, remember we said there's two types of employee benefit plans. There's welfare plans and there's pension plans. Let's get to know welfare plans a little bit. Okay, so a welfare plan can be classified as defined benefit or defined contribution. And a pension plan can also be classified like this. But let's look at a welfare plan first. A defined benefit welfare plan usually does not have separate accounts for individual participants, whereas a defined contribution plan, that would have separate accounts for each participant. And benefits would be limited to the balance in each account, like a flexible spending account. Now let's talk about funding. For a welfare plan, unfunded plans are where all benefits are paid by insurance, or maybe they're paid by the employer, or maybe by a combination of the two. Remember what a welfare plan is. It's a health care plan, a disability plan, a life insurance plan. And if all benefits are paid by insurance or paid by the employer or a combination of the two, that means it's unfunded. No employee contributions. Unfunded means no employee contributions. And what ERISA does is it exempts unfunded welfare plans from audit requirements. So as long as no employee money is going into these plans and being used to pay benefits, then the welfare plan is exempt from ERISA audit requirements. Now let's look at funded plans. Funded plans are where employees contribute to the welfare fund. And if any portion of the plan is funded, then all the plan's activities are subject to ERISA and the plan assets are now required to be held in trust or in a custodial account because employee money is involved. And you can't have the employer commingling plan assets with the employer's assets because there's employee money in there. So funded plans you're gonna see are more likely to require an audit. All right, let's try this question. An employee benefit plan that provides disability benefits to participants is best characterized as what? Is that a welfare plan? Yeah, that is a type of welfare plan, a disability plan. Is that a pension plan? No. Is it a healthcare plan? No, a healthcare plan is a different type of welfare plan than a disability plan. They're both welfare plans, but that's not what the question's asking. And it's not a 401k plan because that would be a pension plan. So D and B go together. Now it's asking about an employee benefit plan that provides disability benefits to participants. That's the key. The key word here is disability benefits to participants. That wouldn't be a healthcare plan. That would be a welfare plan. So letter A is the answer. Disability plans are a type of welfare plan, and so are health care plans, but they provide different types of benefits. Health care plans provide health insurance benefits. You get sick, you have to pay medical bills, health care plan kicks in. Disability, also a welfare plan, pays the employee cash when you're disabled instead of your salary because you can't come to work, so you're disabled, so you'll collect the disability, and that's a welfare plan. All right, we looked at welfare plan. Let's look at pension plans. Defined benefit versus defined contribution. Defined benefit plans, that's where the employer promises the employee a specific amount each year at retirement, such as 60% of your final year's salary, either as an annual annuity or possibly one lump sum. The government has been doing this for decades, these defined benefit plans, where they say to the employee, work for us for 20 years, and we'll give you 60% of your final year's salary when you hit age 65, and you'll get that for the rest of your life. Or you could just take it in one lump sum. That's a defined benefit plan where the benefit is known in advance. Other than the state and local governments, nobody else, no companies are really 
offering defined benefit plans anymore because they're very unrealistic to promise somebody a certain dollar amount every year at retirement. So most pension plans now are not defined benefit, but defined contribution plans. And defined contribution plans will have a separate account for each participant. Benefits will be limited to the balance in each account. This is your typical 401k in the private sector or 403b for your public school teachers and charities. And these allow employees to defer income until retirement. Taxes aren't paid until distribution from the plan at retirement. And if you need help passing the CPA audit exam, get yourself on I-75, the right road to passing audit, FAR, BEC, and REG. And if you found this video easy to follow, get yourself a subscription to I-75 audit by going to cpaexamtutoring.com. I'm Darius Clark. You read about me in the Facebook groups. Now let me help you pass the CPA exam.